Yeah, no worries. Um, just give me about 20 minutes, and then we'll head down. No worries. See you in a minute, Scroft. All right, Ambini. I won't be long, honestly. Nearly finished up. Right, so let's get this done then. Oh, man. Cows are nearly done. I've got a busy day today ahead of me. A lot of grass work to finish off. Still need to do that grass that they left out in that field. George wants to make silage from it. Um, but we do need hay, so... I'm gonna have to find a solution for that. Let me just check this. They do need mocking out, don't they? I mean, I have fed them, so that's one job done, at least. Let's just check on them, because I know George asks me every day. Surprised, actually. George hasn't rang me yet, which is not like him. He's usually straight on the blower to me. He's getting full as well. Yeah, he's normally called by now. Let's go have a look at this bunker. It took us hours to sheet that up. We even got a beanie to help us out. George was there on the, the Massey, compacting it for hours. And in all fairness, he did a good job. He got it more compact than what they left it, but he did a good job for the amount of grass that went in that bunker. Yeah, you can see he's... He's made a, a good job of that, compacting it. Sheeted it up so we've got silage anyway. We've got plenty of it. This will last us quite some time. I think we've done well. It doesn't look like there's any gaps, so we shouldn't get too much wastage. It looks pretty good. <laughs> look at that for a view. Just see him happy out there, can't we, cows? Nice farm this is. It really is. I'd love it. I really would, but I don't think George is going to keep it after. It's well out of my price range. Well out. Anyway. Yeah, dying for out for hay. We've got enough for another feed mix. Same with silage. But we're dying for it. Hey up. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Hey up, mate. Hey up. You right? <laughs> I'm alright, you? Uh. What do you mean by that? I thought you'd be happy as... I thought you'd be happy as hell. Bloody parish councillor now, George, for Bamwell. I know that. Bloody hell do I know that. Uh, I'll tell you more when you come down, but bloody hell, I've not, I've not got off kitchen table yet. <laughs> Are you that busy? Well, no, it's a, I'll, I'll explain when you It's difficult to understand, but I'm not really busy, but I am as well. You wouldn't believe the things I've figured out. <laughs> well, you've put me interest now. I well, know, you bloody wait. Just you wait, mate. It's, it's bloody scandalous, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, God. Scandals? I don't know what to know about them. Oh, no, no, you do. I'm telling you, it's bloody gobsmacking. And because of that, I've not stopped. Bloody hell, it's never easy, is it? Never easy. Anyway, how are you getting on? I'm doing all right. Yeah, me and, me and Beanie are nearly done. Uh, is Beanie with you? Yeah. She stayed here last night. Oh, bloody hell, fight, that's why. I was wondering where she was this morning. She's usually here by now. No, she's heading with me. I just thought I'd feed the cows. And then we all head down. Makes sense. Bloody hell, I don't want to know what you got up to on your date night. Ooh, date night, date night. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you anyway. <laughs> I don't want bloody no. No, not today. Bloody hell, I've got a headache already. Anyway, hurry up. Come make me a brew. Make you a brew? George, you just told me you're sitting on kitchen table. How far away are you from your kettle? Well, I, might, I might be, but bloody hell, I'll pay you. Pay you at least make me a bloody brew when I've got my head stuck in paperwork. <laughs> when I get there, I'll make us all a brew. Well, we'll hurry up then. Oh, bloody hell, I nearly forgot. The reason I rang you up. Why? What's up? Well, bloody hell, feed mix on its way. What do you mean, feed mix? I mean the feed mix and the bloody sugar beets are on the way. Who are they? Well, oh, they're on the way. They'll probably be with you in a few minutes. If not now. Well, I rang you up, but I nearly forgot about that. Right, well, let me just park this up out the way. You know I'll get here, don't they? Well, you know I'll get there, but you'll have to probably guide them where they want to go. All right, then. Well, I'll I'll have to do that then. I, well, all cows are sorted. I can hear some of it. He's here now. You, bloody hell, you got that timing spot on, George. Well, I see. I'm a good hunter. All right, then. Uh, well, I'll guide him in now. That reverse. Just turn around, mate. It's down that way. There. By that shed. Right, I can hear you talking to him, so I'll let you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll sort this out. Cows are fed, everything. I've checked them out. They're all happy before you ask me. Um, I'll be on my way down. 
Well, buddy, oh, Keith wronged me today as well. But I'll tell you everything when you come down. All right, and I know you want me to do that bloody bailing as well. What would he do? Well, I can't leave that grass out because it gets bloody rained on. Oh, and, and the herbicide. Herbicide's most important. You've got to get that done before we miss a chance. All right, then. I'll start it all when I get down. All right, and no worries, buddy. See you in a bit. See you in a bit, mate. Oh, the sugar beets finally arrived anyway. Ah, right, in there, mate. You can see him now. He knows where he's going. Ah, oh, that'll do. That's good there. I mean, look at that thing. Tips from the side. How easy is that for them guys? That's a brilliant trailer. And spot on, there you go. Plenty more. It tipped it all to the side. <laughs> Honestly, such a clever thing. Right, well, that's that done. So, let's check I've done everything on the yard. Just need muck out, probably give them a bit more straw, but we, they can wait on that for a bit. I think we're good to go. I'll go grab Beanie and we'll head down. These guys are done anyway. Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready now, Beanie. Bloody trail amazes me. Just tipped from the side. <laughs> I know, I know. I've, I've just realised what I've said to you. You're probably not as impressed by it as me. No, oh, it's really cool, but I'll be honest, I don't get it as much as you. <laughs> I know, come on. I'll drive. I, I, I only just realised what I said after you. <laughs> It's, it's pretty cool. I've never seen a trailer like it, basically, that just tips from the side like that. Dead helpful for the farm, like, if we had one of them, but... I bet they'd cost quite a bit. No chance George doing that. He's rang me as well. Oh, yeah? Is he OK? I know I'm a bit later than normal. Yeah, he's fine. He just wanted to know if you were right. He didn't know where you were, so I just said you'd stayed at the farm with me. Ah, uh, OK. It's not too bad, then. No, he'll be fine. He seems like he's stressed out. He's asked me to make him a brew and he's sitting in his kitchen. <laughs> That's George for you. Yeah? I know. So I'll have to make a brew when we get there. But he's already given me, well, there's fair jobs, put it that way. A list as long as my arm. Well, have fun with that. Yeah, thanks, I will. Right, well, I know there's probably the pigs and your horses, so I'll, uh, I'll probably see you when I'm all done. Yeah, sounds like a plan. All right, Beanie. I'll drop you off. I don't know if you want to come in. Uh, yeah, I'll come in for a brew. Why not? Yeah, I may as well, aren't you? No reason why not. You thinking about that building work? Yeah. Just can't wait to see it done. Obviously, it takes a while, doesn't it, get rid of all the rubble that they've knocked down? It should be good though. I mean, George has explained what he's doing and it sounds like a good idea, but costing a pretty penny. I know, but I think he's got a few grants for it as well. I don't think it's all coming out of his back pocket or else he'd probably have an heart attack, wouldn't he, George? <laughs> right, uh, yeah. Let's go in. Hope he's all right. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Is that you? Is that you too, actually? Yeah, it's both of us. Hi, George. Hi, Beanie, you all right? I'm good, thank you. Do you want a brew? Scruff told me you did. Oh, bloody hell, if you could, that'd be bloody brilliant. Thank you so much, love. No worries. Any time. Nice one, Beanie. Right, George, what's, what's, what's going on? Oh, bloody hell, what's going on? <laughs> Where do I bloody start, mate? I, I don't know whether I'm coming or going at the moment. What, is this all parish council stuff? Well, pretty much. But listen, right, first thing I say, the job's not much. You wouldn't bloody believe it, but we have one meeting a month. That's it. One bloody meeting a month. That's all i got to do. Well, why are you so stressed then? That doesn't sound too bad, George. Well, listen here though, Beanie. I'm telling you, both of you listen here. It's in a like that, right? I've been digging. As I was looking at all the responsibilities I've got, main part of the job, honestly, is planning things like, you know, you might have a local meet for people in the village and Christmas, I don't know, Christmas, stuff at Christmas. 
I've got an idea for myself though what I'm going to do. Never mind the bloody potholes. We need some more bloody defibrillators around this area. And I'm, oh, I've got bloody plenty of ideas. Potholes, defibrillators. And I was thinking I might set up something for the summer that would be pretty cool for us farmers. Uh, kind of like a farmer's meet. Bit of music. You know, bit of an outdoor festival. Tractors come there. You know, just bit, some, some fun for farmers around this area. They've had it hard done to, mate. I'm telling you. This is what, this is the bit that I found though. Because... Most of the job is bloody sitting in in that monthly meeting about bloody planning permission. I had a look at all the stuff bloody Tim did, right? And you wouldn't bloody believe what I found. He He's rejected every, and I mean every single planning permission to do with a farm. You're joking me? What, just farms? It bloody looks that way. I've gone through all this bloody paperwork here. I've, 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 had, I've had a look at all the minutes from the meetings they've had. Remember, it's only one a month, so I've gone back a few years now, and I can tell Tim's chaired most of these bloody meetings, and anything to do with a farm is rejected. If it's in a farm, he bloody approves it. This is bloody corruption, this is Scroft, and this is why it's important that I got in. It's it's bloody crazy. I don't know what kind of bloody agenda he's got against farms, but there's something going on here, I'm telling you. We both know he don't like us. What you know, we both work on a farm. <laughs> It's not surprising. It's not bloody surprising, but how the bloody hell's he get away with it? It's not just him on this committee, you know. I'm just saying. Like all these bloody farms, he rejected them all. So what I decided to do is I had a look at another bloody council around, right? I've had a look at their minutes and their bloody action plans and all that malarkey. Bloody action plans? What are you on about? Hey, listen, it's not my fault to learn all this lingo since I've had it. I've, I've had to. Anyway, I was looking at these other councils, all the parish councils, all the meetings that have gone on for, you know, other places, not Banwell, they've had the similar situation where farmers come in, ask for planning permission, accepted, accepted. Every bloody time, with it. if it's in the parameters, it's reasonable, they accept it. It's only bloody Banwell that's not. It's crazy. So I'm going through all these bloody things here, and I'm seeing it for what it is. That Tim guy, and I, I bloody told you from day one, there's something wrong with him. He's bloody lost his marbles, that lot has. <laughs> it's in a worth laughing about, though, Scroft, is it? It's people's livelihoods, this is. People's bloody hard-working endeavours. Shot down by some guy with a bloody bee in his bonnet. Oof. Tell you, got no darn for him, I haven't. Well, think of it like this, George, right? You're on now. If a farmer comes in now with planning permission, he, that, that's probably why he got in. You probably got voted for by all these farmers. Oh, gosh, George, that's crazy but you know scroff's right like you said if you've got a farmer applying for planning permission and it's reasonable then he's more than likely going to get it i bet it feels nice to have someone on the side again ah do right love do right but no i just couldn't believe it couldn't believe it. i've been sitting here just trying to learn it all and actually i'm quite relieved it, there ain't much to it one meeting a month that's all i have to do and i've got a few ideas like i said i want to sort out some of the bloody potholes around because it's crazy I want to do some more defibrillators. We've only got two in Banwell. We need more than that. And I was thinking to try and organise for the su something for the summer that'll be a, a good crack. Brilliant, George. Sounds good. I'm glad you've dived into it, mate. You sound like you've, you're you really encouraged by it. It's nice to see. Oh, I am. It's not too bad at all. Anyway, all that, put it out the side window. Because right now, let's talk about the norm. How the cows? Cows are good, mate. I told you that on the phone. Right, and are you all right, Beanie, with what you're doing? Yeah, I'm golden. I know what I'm doing. Right, and that's good to know. What about you, Scroft? Yeah, I know you want me to do some herbicide, and you want me to do that bailing. Well, that's about it. Massey's up on the ramp, right? You've changed the tyres. It's got the narrows back on. So all you got to do is fill it up with herbicide and get going. I'd do that first, and then do bailing after. All right, then. No problem. Did that feed come? You mean the sugar beets? What? Yeah, it's dropped off, all sorted. That's good then. Right, well, we've got silage fermenting. We'll have bales fermenting. It's just bloody A next, isn't it? Yeah, we're running low on A. I know, and I've got a plan. I'm going to buy some A for the meantime. Tyre's over. We've got to let grass grow back. We've got to it off and A it, and we'll, we'll do some A bales. All right, and well, I play. It's not going to cost you too much, though, is it? Buy all that hay? Well, it bloody costs what it is, isn't it? We need the bloody feed. I know, I know. Well, just buy a few at the moment. Just don't buy a load. Just buy a few. What are you on about? 
Well, can't we use one at that, that small field for hay now? Uh, I thought same, but Scroff, look at weather. Cloudy, it's not that warm. It's going to take a while for that dry out. We've got a chance that it rains. But hell, it's only May. I mean, I know we're getting to season, aren't we? The first cut, but I still think it's a bit early for hay. Yeah, I know, but I just think... You know, by all this field, field, we got some grass right now mowed in the field. We could turn it into hay. I know that, but what if it rains? If you dead that out now and row it in rains tonight or rains tomorrow, it's going to go and dry out that quick. It want to make good hay, and we've already had that problem with that bloody alfalfa that bloody Keith did. I know, I know. Just buy a few bales, that's all I'm saying. Right? Buy a few bales and... We'll see how it goes. No, we don't want to see how it goes. I'll, I'll buy a few bales, that's fine. We'll go with what we need, right, at time. I won't get loads, we'll just buy a few, see how we get on. But don't want to turn that grass out there into hay. It needs to be silage, right? Think about it. We've got a bunker full of silage, fair dues. But bales have come in handy. It's nice to have that overflow of silage bales. They'll be fine for a while. Wrap them up, put them to one side. It's good. It's a good idea. We're going to get a load of hay on our second cut. A load of it. We'll have more than we ever bloody thought we'd need. We'll have plenty, I'm telling you. So, best thing to do is finish that as silage like we did with this clump. All right, then. I'll do that. If that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. What? All right, and George. Bloody technical decision-making today, aren't you? Well, bloody hell, my someone's got bloody do it. Bloody hell, you got slugs in between your ears. <laughs> what? What are you on about? Bloody in between your ears, you got bloody slugs. If, you, if it was left you, I'll tell you this barn won't be in the States in now. <laughs> Right then, thanks for the vote of confidence, George. Hey, thanks for your vote. <laughs> yeah, well, you got my vote. I'm bloody regretting it now. <laughs> what are you going to do now about it now? you got four years' wait. <laughs> you cheeky bugger. <laughs> well, I learnt it off you. <laughs> right, well, I'll take this brew with me, be any nice one for that, and I'll head off. All right, then, buddy. Just to clarify, right? You're taking care of pigs, Beanie. Yeah, I'll do that. There's nothing else on this farm you need me to do, George. You just want me to go focus on field work. Herbicide, getting that bailing done, yeah? Well, pretty much. That's your day. Brilliant. Brilliant. See, see this is what he's like, Beanie. He gets focused on them tractors. As soon as he's in it, that's it. You want to see him again. Say goodbye to him. You'll probably see him in two days now. No, I'll, I'll be here by the end of the day. It's just nice knowing I ain't got to do any, any other bloody jobs on the yard. I can just sit in tractor now for the rest of the day. Oh, bloody hell, fire. Make it sound like you do nothing. Not quite, George. It's just, it's a nice, isn't it? I like it. It's, I enjoy this part of the job. Well, you should enjoy it all. I do. I honestly do, mate. But, you know, I've fed the cows and sorted all that out. It's nice just get... No, now I've got the rest of the day out in the fields doing a bit of work in the tractor. Well, all right, then. Question is, which tractor are you taking? Well, I'll probably take the Massey, obviously, for the narrows and the herbicide. Well, that makes sense, obviously. Then I'll just take the fence with the baler, because I've never used it before. I'd rather have more more power than and than not enough. Well, all right, and no worries, no worries. Right, I'll, uh, I'll head out then. Ah, oi, bloody hell, just to let you know before you go, Keith rang me today. Yeah? He wants you to do bloody herbicide in his cornfield. That maze? Ah, he wants us check it. Put a bit of herbicide in it. He says he's noticed a few weeds. So I told him we got enough going on at the moment. But as soon as we don't, we'd head down and do it. All right, well, it'll have to be a job for another day, George. But I'll, I'll write it down on my to-do list. Well, all right, and as long as you know. Ah, uh, that's fine with me. Right, see you both in a bit. See ya. See you in a bit, mate. Right. Let's get into that massy. Let's quickly go and do this herbicide. And I do want to sneak off and just head up to my old yard. I just want to check something. It might be a waste of time, but it's worth checking out. Right, spray is there. Herbicide will be around the back. And I changed the tyres on this. Yesterday, so this is ready to go. Right, let's get up. It's close to that roof, in it just about fits on here. Don't think the fence would, you know, with that exhaust. Okay. 
going to be good to proper get into that baler as well. Combi wrapper as well. It's going to make things so much easier. Looking forward to that. I'm going to save it to the, to the last job just because I think it's the best one. <laughs> right, let's get this sorted out. Straightforward job. I've only got the one field. There's no weeds in the other one. Luckily. I've actually had a look as well. They've, they've left it probably about half of this field, you know, to put in for bales. I'm probably going to leave the bales out in the field fermenting for a bit, but then try and stack them up somewhere down here. But it's going to be difficult because this, this is all going to get worked on. I mean, the bunker and the silo that he's having built is going to be on this side as well. So hopefully we can move all this stuff around as and when we need to. But we need to try and figure out somewhere for space still. Barley's coming along so nice. Spot on, that is. You can see the weeds in this one. It's a bit lower down, but they're all they're all perfect. They're all spot on. I think we've gone really lucky with these barley fields this time around. Seeds have come out brilliantly. Yeah, there's a bit of a scattering of them. Right, let's get this sorted out. Plenty to do today. No faffing. No faffing today. I think I've missed any bits. Right, let's get out in this uh, baler. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get in the fence. I'm going to sneak off. Oh, nearly missed the turning. We're gonna. I'm going to sneak off. I'm just going to have a look at my field. See how that grass is getting on. It's got to be getting close now. I know it was a little bit behind, but we're at the end of May. I'm going to say at least start of April, surely. <laughs> Hello? Hey up. Oh, hey up, Ross, you alright? I'm alright, uh. Sure, you sound a bit bloody down on the dumps. But bloody George, that's why, it's unbearable. <laughs> why? Because you bloody know why he won that bloody parish council, I bloody regret voting for him, I do. And don't I tell him I bloody voted as well for him, bloody hell, I'll never hear the end of that. <laughs> don't worry. Is he, what, what's wrong? He bloody rang me up twice to remind me who won, you know. I bloody can read newspaper. I don't need him to tell me. <laughs> well, <laughs> are you ringing me up to tell me that? I, I bloody on it. No, I'm ringing you up about your truck. You haven't forgot about it, have you? No, I've I, no, I haven't forgot about it. Of course not. I just ain't. I found something that I think will win. I think you'll be happy with. Right, and what is it? A new truck. You joking me? No, I'm only bloody pulling your leg. Of course now. No, I found an old bloody engine for it. Yeah. And I can get just a few parts off this bloody engine and it'll fix it straight up. I'm telling you, it's in that much money as well. 
That sounds too good to be true. It ain't it, I'm bloody telling you. It'd just be an older engine, that's all. What do you mean, older engine than the one that was already in it? Ah, pretty much. Uh, bloody hell, Ross. Is that going to be a rate? Well, the best option you got, or, or you buy a bloody brand new and that's going to cost you too much. You may as well get another truck at that point. Sure, cool, but it wouldn't be much. I'm talking like 300 quid. 300 quid? Yeah, and then you're going to have to pay me, I'd say, well, at least at least a couple hundred just for doing work. So what are we saying? 500 quid, get that fixed? Ah, I can get it fixed for about 500, but you just can have an older engine in. It'll still be all right, though, won't it? This engine. Well, technically, I mean, you'll have some parts of yours and some parts of this older engine. It'll bloody run as good as it did before, but I'm just saying it'll be a bit older, so you never know, it might bloody pack up in six months' time. Do you? I don't know, do I? Bloody, I don't want to bloody throw in warranty, Scroft. <laughs> I know that. I know that. I'm just saying, is it going to be worth it? Do you think I should just go for a new truck, because I can put 500 to that? Bloody hell, new truck's a lot of money. I know, but I could get one on finance. Well, that's up to you. I've got to tell you, I'm here trying to fix it. This is what you bloody asked me in the first place, so it's your call. Uh, well, for 500 quid, that ain't bad at all, is it, really? So, I tell you what, just go for it, Ross. 500 quid, if you can get that up and running, I'll take that. I mean, it's not much money, and I might I might have a look at trucks anyway on finance, and if you can get it fixed, I can sell it, can't I, for more than that? Uh, exactly. See, now you're using your bloody head. Exactly. If I fix it for 500, you can sell it for a bloody couple of thousand anyway. That's true. All right, a nice one, Ross. Thanks for letting me know. All right, and, and tell that bloody George not bloody ringing me, right? Unless it's for me to turn money off him. <laughs> I'll pass the message on. Thanks, mate. Uh, see you in a bit. See you, mate. Bloody hell, fire. Right, let's go sneak off. I only say sneak off because I've just got a bit of a plan. I don't want George finding out because I know what he'll tell me. He'll tell me not to do it. But he'd do the same for me. I don't know if George took the signs down the has. I know he did it round on his farm, but I was wondering if he left them up outside of the pub just to announce to everyone. <laughs> But fair play to him. Oh man, it feels like ages since I've been here. Feels like time ago. In a caravan. <laughs> Bloody hell. If I have to go back to a caravan, it's going to be tricky. But at the same time, I'll do it if I have to. Save a bit of money. Right, this is what I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at how this grass is getting on. Let's just pull this up here. I did finally sort this out as well. So, I have planted in. And you can see it's done a cracking job. Extended it out to where I wanted it. And leveled it off. So I think it looks much better as a grass field. But look at the grass. It's not quite there, is it? It's a little bit off. See, what I was hoping to do in surprising George is I'll make some hay for him. I won't even ask for a penny. I know we need it on the farm and he's helped me out a lot with this house and everything. So I could cut this, make a few hay bales for him. And just... You know, get a trailer, put them on, take them there. He won't even have a choice then. Just drop them off. Start using them for feed. I mean, I've got a mower. I've got a trailer. I can borrow a few things from the farm, like the Massey, without him knowing. To load them on, I just need a tether in a row. So I'm somehow going to have to do that. I don't want. I honestly don't want to ask him. Because he'll stop me. He'll say, no, no, don't worry. I'll buy some. And I don't want to do that. I want to help him out. Mm, I was hoping it would have been ready, but it's not. Who's this now? Is this George? He's probably asking where I am. I hope it's not. Hello? Hey up. Hey up, Batman. Oh, sorry, Jerry. Sorry, Jerry. Bloody hell, that's me hanging around with George too much. Sorry about that. Apologies. Bloody hell, not you as well. Oh, my God. Don't to start calling me back, my like him. Please, don't to. It'll catch on, then. <laughs> I think it might have caught on already, Jerry. Bloody hell. I don't know why he calls me Batman. I don't want to get into that now, Jerry. How, how are you doing, anyway? Everything all right? How's the, how's the new farm? Oh, it's all right. Just taking a bit of use to do. We haven't got animals in or anything yet, but we do want to get there at some point. 
But I'm ringing you about some work. I won't ask you before I ask George. All right, and what? For me to do some work? Ah, I'm telling you now. If you want some money, this is a great opportunity. All right, and well, we've got quite a lot on at the moment, so depends what it is. Well, that's the thing. It's not right now. I'm kind of calling to give you an heads up because I know what bloody George is like. All right, and Jerry, what is it you've got got on? I'm looking for a driver. Bloody hell, what, what for a getaway? No, not bloody getaway, no. I've got a fair few fields that will be coming up to harvest soon. Right, I've got a few helpers, as you know, but the main guy that used to work for me's left. So I'm, I'm short-handed. I need help in hand. I need a driver for one of the harvesters. What, for me? I'll do that, bloody straight away. Well, there'll be a few thousand pound for you if you help me out on all these fields, but I don't think you'll be able to do that. How many fields are we talking about, Jerry? I've got three barley that are due first, then a canola, then I've got two corn, and I've got some beans and another one. Bloody hell, fire. What? Is that, what, seven fields? Uh, three, two, yep, seven. Seven fields I've got. The hell, Jerry. you got three barley fields due soon. We've got three barley fields as well. Man, they might tie up at the same time, you know. Well, I know, but I thought I'd ask. If you can speak to George and tell him I'm happy to help out. Is it just harvesting you want? Yeah, I've, I've got carting. I've got people carting, but I need someone else in the harvester. I've got two harvesters. I've only got one person driving, right? And I know you've done it before, and I don't trust the other guys in them. Yeah, I've done it a few times. I'm not I ain't a pro or anything, but I'm good enough. Well, that's good enough for me. Listen, speak to George. I'll speak to George too. Try buddy when he moves, like I said. A few thousand pounds for you. It's not bad earning. I just need you to harvest some of that barley. And then after that, if everything goes to plan, you can help me out with the other ones if you got time. All right, and well, I'll speak to him, but you know what he's like, and priority's got to be the barley fields on George's farm. I know. And we got all this grass work due, because, you know, cows are our main source, mate. I know, I know. Just speak to him. I'll also give him a bow. I won't bring him... I'll leave it for a couple of days to give you a chance to talk to him, soften him over. <laughs> All right, and Jerry. All right, and buddy, thank you. See you in a bit. See you, mate. Bloody hell of fire. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Just about having time. George will let me do it if I've got time. And that's the problem. We've got three barley fields of our own that are going to be due around the same time as his. So, I don't know. If I get a chance out, I'll part well. I can imagine his harvester as well might be a modern one as well. I bloody regret not getting a chance to drive one of them. I'll we'll see. I'll we'll see. He ain't a bad Georgian. He isn't. But if we've got work, got all this grass field to do, got to finish off this silage, at least that's done, and we've got three barley fields of our own, and we've got a load of hay to do after. Obviously, with this build going on, it's kind of freed up a bit of space in time. And Beanie's back now helping out, so there is a good chance that I can do it. But I guess it just depends. Depends on what's going on when it's ready. I'll speak to him about it. I'll leave for today, though. He's going to keep it a couple of days till he rings George. I'll, I'll probably ask George tomorrow. But anyway, let's get back down. Let's get out in them fields and get that silage done. And the hay, I'm definitely going to do that for George. I'm just going to have to get it mowed at some point I could do it like maybe in a, in a week's time when we hit April I think grass will be ready then and then I can cut it I'm just going to find a way of tedding it and rowing it without George knowing and I don't want to lease out any equipment when George will happily lend it me but if he knows he's lending it me for me to do him a favour he won't because he's just too proud he won't accept out like that but he should do because he's helped me out a lot Net wrap is in. And I've got some foil in there as well. A green one this time. Should be good to try this out. Oh, let's start with the cow one first. We best get that finished off with it having half the field done already. And then the smallest one's always the easiest one anyway.
interested to see this in action. Compared to the other baler we had, this is a big improvement. Massive improvement, in fact, being able to wrap at the same time. We'll have to try it out. Just test, we'll test one bail out first, just make sure it's, it is working okay. Target, that is good. Plenty of muck as well, gonna have to shift that soon. Good thing about it as well, we can shift the slurry and the muck with well, us doing these grass fields. We can get it on before we get in and do the hay. Right, let's try this out over here first, this row. Right, let's drop that down. Let's see if we start picking up this grass. Hey, do you know what? That looks spot on. Spot on. Get this first bale done, and then we'll, we'll check it out. We can fly through this. Fly through this with this bale. <laughs> Another cracking purchase. Do you like the second I'm brand new? I think I'm starting to turn into George, but he is spot on. Why go brand new when you can get second and brand new? Third bail I did. I messed up the first one. I dropped it without wrapping it, so we're going to have to give that to... Probably to the pigs, just a bit of grass or something. Or maybe the horses. But yeah, I tell you what, that's not bad at all. Is awesome. 27 bales later. What is it? Five? No, four o'clock. We've done 27 bales. That's how many I counted. I mean, they're really small bales. Probably three of them bales are going one of the feed mixes, but the good to have is back up. George is right. If we have a run low on the bunker now, well, there's obviously going to have a, probably a lot more cows by the time that bunker finishes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just great to know that we've got we've got 27 bales as backup so I'm gonna have to leave them out in the field just let them ferment a little bit and then I'll start storing them away but yeah that's uh yeah, it's great news that is great news let's see if I can reverse this in without him there guiding me 
just about see it. Top of the shed, so I'm hoping this is enough. I also need to move that net wrap. I think I've got space in the middle. But if not, we can just swing it a bit to the left. See, I do it much better when George is not around. I blame George, I do. Stresses me out, watching me. <laughs> right, uh, I could probably take that back a little bit more, couldn't I? Just a touch. There we go, that's got to be plenty now. Got to be. Yeah, spot on. See, George would be proud of that if he was watching. But then again, if he was watching, I probably wouldn't have done it like that. <laughs> but yeah, 27 bales. Can't complain at that. We'll park this up here for a bit. Let's go inside, get a brew, speak to everyone, see what's going on. I think Beanie's shouting about. I don't know. I'll have to check. Not a bad day, is it? Finished off the fields. All the silage is now done. Fermenting in the bunker and there's rat bales. Plenty of feed in that regard. Do need a bit of hay. I am going to get that hay done for George as well. Surprise him. I think he'll see sense eventually from it. But we need it and he's done a lot for me. A lot. Woody on fire 27. 27, George. Don't get me wrong, they're only small bales, and probably three, four of them are going one fee mix, but it's good to have backup ones like that. 27 silage bales. Well, yeah, well done, mate, well done. You got the herbicide done? I did, did. So I did everything you asked. Well, yeah, you done well, aren't it? Five, what is it, four, quarter past four, something like that? Yeah, not bad, I thought I'd have a brew now. I'd expect to be out in the fields a lot longer than that. Well, bloody hell, I did too. Well, I'm done now as well. I've done everything I need to do. Really, it's into that bad, this ain't. Living the dream, I am. Living the dream. Get still run my farm. Do this as a little bit of reward for myself, but also for me morale. You know, doing good for people makes you feel good. And I think I can do a lot of good in this. Well, that's nice here, George. Tell you what, I wish a lot of people were like that, to be honest. I think a lot of people are. It's just this bloody world, you know, it wears people down, doesn't it? So, remember, always see the best in bloody people. Unless the bloody plonkers. <laughs> bloody hell, there's a few of them, especially around here. <laughs> anyway, go on, get us that brew on. I am. I'm making me one, aren't you? Well, all right. Where's Beanie? She's out with horses, I think. Oh, pigs, one or two. She's been out for a while now. She's been in and out, though. She's all right. All right, then. Are you up? Are you expecting anyone? Uh, not as I know of. Go on, go do me the honours. Bloody hell, have you been out of that chair today? Or are you in the chair now, one? What cheeky bloody bugger. I've been out in this chair when I got need to go toilet. <laughs> what about... Ah, uh, I've done me donut run. <laughs> Fine, I'll get the door. George? What? Oh, buddy, that's in the bad news, is it? <sighs> it's Tim. Tim? Oh, buddy, I'm not here. Hiya, Tim, you all right? Oh, hello. Is, uh, is George there, please? Uh, is, is George there? T two seconds, mate. George. Did you not bloody tell him bugger off? No. Come on, he wants to speak to you. I aren't doing this. This is your thing. This is, I ain't sorting this out for you. You bloody coward. Coward. You could have bloody just told him bugger off, but you don't do you. That's the second time you've made me talk to him. <laughs> it's not my fault. He's knocking on your house. Bloody coward. <laughs> right, when you need me, have your back. I'm telling you, I'll have you for this. Just talk to him. You never know, he might want to congratulate you. <laughs> Tell you what, if that, if that happens, I'll have to fly down. Right, go speak to him anyway, go on. I bloody will, I'm coming now, right? Chill out, just need to compose myself. <sighs> Dear old fire, Tim's a bloody blonker. I've got to listen to this. Hey up, Tim, you're right. What can I help you with? 
Hello, George. Right. First things first. Congratulations on... Yes, on winning Parish Councillor. Took me a few days to come to terms with it, and I think for the tricks you pulled, I shouldn't have expected anything else. Especially with putting the signs outside the pub. No. Not fair. Not fair if you ask me. Uh, listen here, Tim. No, I haven't finished yet, George. Fine. You have your say, but when you're done, you let me have my say. Okay, fine. I think you played this unfair. It's never been fair between me and you. You've always been rude to me. You've always spoke down to me, and it's not its not acceptable. Since I moved here, I've lost my job at the dairy. As an auditor, I have now lost my role in the parish council. Whatever you have against me, you should stop. Because bad things happen to bad people. Excuse me, Tim. You've obviously got something wrong with your head. Because you're not seeing the world for what it truly is, buddy. Now, I'm having my say, right? Yes, all that thing's happened to you, but that is nothing to do with me, and it's unfair for you to come to my house and put that on my front door, literally. So listen here, buddy, and listen well, because I'm only going to bloody say this once. I've seen the workload now of this bloody parish council job, and I've seen you for what you are. You didn't welcome me or Scroff when we first moved here. You were a pain in our backside. We know you don't like farmers. We're not dumb, and we weren't born yesterday. It was unfair how you treated us on that audit, and you lost your job because of you, not because of us, it's because of you. They saw you for what you were and they got rid of you. Not our problem. You want to start following the rules that your company sets out, because if you did, that bloody wouldn't have happened. I've also seen, and I've got bloody proof of it now, the bloody planning permission that you've been rejecting on farms. Every single one of them were following the guidelines and there's no bloody reason and you know why you shouldn't have accepted them. But you did, to suit your bloody agenda. And it's not just mine, it's just Jerry's. I've seen all the other farmers' cases you've rejected. You never even published the minutes on some of your meetings. What's that about? It's a legal requirement, and you know that, Tim. Other councils do the exact same on their parish councils, but you, for some reason, for the last God knows how long, have set your own rules in Banwell. Well, it changes. it changes now. You clearly have an agenda against farmers, right? You used your power to suit that agenda, and it's corrupt, and it stops now. So don't you come on my doorstep threatening me. Get gone with you, because I've had enough. Good day, sir. <laughs> don't you start? <laughs> I, I only get to say a thing, George. Bloody hell, that was unbelievable. What are you on about? That was awesome. You told him straight, mate. You told him everything he should have bloody heard from day one. Oh, George, you've just made my day. What a bloody hell. Where are you going then? <laughs> I think I might give myself a pat on the back for that one. Bloody hell, I didn't even know where it came from. Just just bloody happened, that did. I think it came from the heart. Well, it was perfect. You told him straight. <laughs> and you were polite and proper. You even said good day, sir, before you shut the door on his face. <laughs> well, bloody hell, I've had enough of him. Do you know... Well, in five minutes, when I've calmed down and all the adrenaline has gone out my body, I'm going to be annoyed because he... How dare he say all that bloody stuff to us, then? You can see how bloody deluded that guy is. He thinks we've got a bloody agenda against him. It's him. It's bloody him and it always will be him. And good riddance, I see. Well, I don't know, Joe. I just, I'm just glad the way you told him. You told him straight, mate. I bloody did, and he needed to hear it. Ah... I'm only worried now of what he said. What are you on about? Well, he made one point clear, didn't he? He said, bad things happen to bad people. Does he think we're bad? Is that what he's saying? Are we bad people? And is something bad going to happen to us? Hmm. I never bloody thought of that. Well, all I'll say... If he's that much of a bloody fool, tell him bring it on. But I know what I'll do. As soon as I see anything, I'll ring the bloody police. Too right, George. Don't take things into your own hands like last time. Hey, that was nothing wrong with that. I was out on the road. Yes, I was stopping traffic and I get that. That was the wrong part. But I was protesting like he, he did outside our house. I know, but if you see anything, and or I do, I'm just going to ring the police. 
especially with what he just said. Well, we'll do that. I'll tell Beanie the same. Yeah. In fact, I think I might go out to Beanie now. Well, I would. We'll check if she's alright. Bloody Blanca. Alright, and George. Hey, I think I've said this two times in a row now. I'm proud of you, man. That was awesome. Nice one. Nice one, son. Nice one, son.